name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is in our body. Forgive me. Paul, I'm going to ask you to actually grab the icon from the middle right there and hold it up. I don't often do this, but one of the things I wanted to do, carefully, of course, is to explain this icon a little bit. There are two things that I wanted to do today, but I wanted to explain this icon. So, as, and show it to them. Pull, pull it up high and show it to them. There you go. The reason I wanted to do this is this icon, when it comes out, shows us the Feast of Pentecost. And there are several elements in the icon, now that it's out, that I want everybody to be aware of. So the icon itself is in bold colors of red and gold. And so this signifies already that this is a great event. When you look at, the at this icon, the movement of the icon is from top to bottom. At the top of the icon is a semicircle with rays coming out of it. These rays are pointed toward the holy apostles, and the tongues of fire are seen descending each one of them signifying the descent of the Holy Spirit. The building in the background of the icon um, is the upper room where the disciples gathered from ascension. The apostles are shown seated in a semicircle as well, which shows the unity of the church. Included in the group of the apostles is St. Paul, who, though not present with the others on the day of Pentecost, became an apostle of the church and a great missionary. Also included are the four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, holding the book of the Gospels in their hands, while the other apostles are holding scrolls that represent the teaching authority given to them by Christ, as we heard in today's Gospel lesson. In the center of the icon below the apostles is a royal figure and he is seen against a dark background. This is a symbolic figure. This is cosmos. This is the world. Representing the people of the world living in darkness and sin, and especially at that time, involved in pagan worship. The tradition of the church holds that the apostles carried the message of the gospel to all the parts of the world. And because of this, you see that he carries a cloth, containing scrolls, which represent the teachings of the apostles. The icon of Pentecost is we see the fulfillment of the promise of the Holy Spirit, descending down upon the apostles, the Holy Spirit, who will teach the nations and baptize them in the name of the Holy Trinity. And here we see the church is brought together and sustained in unity through the presence and the work of the Holy Spirit that the Spirit guides the church in the missionary endeavor throughout the world, and that the Spirit nurtures the body of Christ, the church, in true love. All right, Paul, you can put that back. <laughs> so now, the second thing that I wanted to teach you about today was now the, the prayer that we now have back in the church. From the time of, especially... Uh, Holy uh, um, Pascha, until now, we have not started any service with the words, O Heavenly King, O Comforter, the Spirit of Truth. And it is today, actually starting from last night, that we start to hear this prayer enter the church again. And that is because this particular prayer is the prayer of the Holy Spirit. So from last night in Vespers, we heard this. Come, O you people. Let us worship the Godhead in three hypostases, the Son and the Father, with the Holy Spirit, for the Father timelessly begat the Son, who is co-eternal and one throne. And the Holy Spirit was in the Father, glorified with the Son, one might, one essence, one Godhead, which we all worship, saying, Holy God, who did create all things through the Son, with the cooperation of the Holy Spirit, holy mighty, through whom we have known the Father, through whom the Holy Spirit came into the world, holy immortal, the comforting Spirit who proceeded from the Father and rested in the Son, O Holy Trinity, glory to Thee. So we start by hearing, O Heavenly King. 
And this is the title of the Holy Spirit given by Jesus in the Apostle of the Gospel of St. John, chapters 15 and 16, when he says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must also worship him in truth and in spirit. He is the comforter. This is the title of the Holy Spirit given by Jesus in the Gospel of St. John as well in chapters 15 and 16. In Greek, it means the paraclete. In English editions of the scriptures, sometimes you will hear this translated as helper. So who does the Holy Spirit comfort and help? The Holy Spirit offers comfort to us, the Christian people. And he does this because Christians need comfort, help, and encouragement in the faith of the many trials and tribulations that we face both as individuals and collectively as the church. We are truly refugees in this world. We are in the world, but not part of it. Nothing in this world can comfort us, so we must call on God, the Holy Spirit, to do this. He is the Spirit of truth. This, again, is a title given by Jesus himself in John 15 and 16. In these chapters, which come from his mystical supper before his death and third day rising, Jesus speaks of the function of the Holy Spirit. He says that there are many things that Jesus still has to teach his followers, which they are not ready to hear. However, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide them into an understanding and embracing of all these teachings. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth because it reveals to us through history the truth of Jesus Christ and his good news and how we can apply the gospel to our contemporary lives. He is everywhere present and fillest all things. Psalm 139 summarizes this very eloquently. It says this, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Hades, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand shall hold me. For you formed my inward parts, you covered me in my mother's womb. And so, because God is everywhere present and fills all things, this now lets us ask some interesting questions before I continue on with the rest of this prayer. If we suppose for a moment that the purpose of life is to be where God is, and let us also suppose that God is in heaven. Therefore, the purpose of life must be to be in heaven so that we can be where God is. If we also believe that God is in all places, then this is problematic because God is already here. God is already present with us. Wherever we are, whatever we are doing, God is present. So we don't need to go to any other place to be with God. So what does this mean about heaven? Well, it means that we are able to live out the kingdom of God here and on earth by connecting ourselves with God who surrounds us and fills all things. By the way, this is why in the architecture of the Orthodox Church, God willing, when we build our own, um, that we have domes because in the architecture of the church, we want to show the encompassing presence of God rather than steeples that point someplace where we presume that He is. There are many times in the church where we'll say, we know where God is, meaning God is in the church, but we, know, we don't know where He isn't. One of my professors corrected me a little bit on this. He says, he rather, he goes, you need to say this. We know where God is. And God is also everywhere. <laughs> so there is no place that he is not. Uh, so it's a nuance on it, but it, is, it brings us out so close. The Holy Spirit is the treasury of blessings. St. Paul in Galatians 5, 22 and 23 quotes the fruits of the Holy Spirit when he says to us that he is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. These are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And also Paul asserts that there are many kinds of spiritual gifts, but it is the same Holy Spirit who is the source of them all. The Holy Spirit is the giver of life. 
In Romans 8, 11 we read, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as He raised Christ from the dead, He will give life to your mortal body by the same Spirit living within you. The Holy Spirit is the giver of life everlasting to all who place their hope in the Son of God. Also, and in a universal way, the Holy Spirit is the one who holds all that exists together. Thus, the Spirit is the giver, not only of eternal human life, but of all life. So, hopefully, two things become clear because of this prayer. First of all, the words of our prayers are not just simply selected because of their ascetic quality. Rather, they are carefully chosen to bring forth a timeless message that we receive. Secondly, the words of this specific prayer form a small confession of faith about the Holy Spirit. Through O Heavenly King, we are taught that the Holy Spirit is God Himself, that He offers those who turn to Him the strength and perspective necessary to live Christianity to its fullest. And also we are taught that there is no place where the Spirit is not, and that there is no gift or blessing which we receive in our lives that does not come from Him. It is on this foundation of beliefs that we continue to prayer, O Heavenly King, come and abide in us, cleanse us of every impurity, and save our souls, O good one. It is not just any spirit which we invite to live with us, but it is the Spirit of God. It is not just any teaching in which we place our hope, but it is the truth which is revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. It is not any philosophy or movement or person that can grant us cleansing, healing, and salvation, but only God, the Holy Spirit, who is the source of all good things and all that gives life and then all that is true. We call on the Holy Spirit every day. There is almost no service in the church that we do not begin by saying and invoking the name of the Holy Spirit. Every day, then, we ask the Holy Spirit to abide in us, to cleanse us from every sin, to act on our fallen nature, to be like leaven in a dough, that we may become bread suitable for the kingdom of heaven, and that our souls will be saved because of it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.